Welcome back. And we're moving into our final segment for today, keeping up with uh, some of those resolutions that you've set for yourself. Now, uh, if you have been looking to change careers, perhaps uh, advance within your own profession, one of the things that you can do is be able to access professional development courses. And so this morning, we're going to be talking to representatives of the University of the West Indies about what they have to offer and kind of help you in how to put together a plan on uh, changing career or enhancing yourself in your career. Okay. We have with us this morning Lisa Rock, who is the Senior Administrative Assistant for Student Affairs at UWE Open Campus Belize. And we have the head of UWE Open Campus in Belize, Jane Bennett. Good morning and welcome and thank you for being here. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning, Marlene, and thank you for having us here yes. today. Mm -hmm. thank you. I am very excited about this topic because I think so often we make many different uh, goals, we set many different goals for ourselves, and especially within the professional realm, um, not realizing that uh, it's not necessarily a skill that you have to build alone, right? So let me just talk to you uh, in terms of uh, what you have in place for this year and how do you cater to the different needs of the Belizean community? I, I think, Marlene, um, I wanted to start this morning by defining the word career. Mm. Because as I reflected on that, um, I realized that sometimes we get, as a people, a little bit confused or we use interchangeably career and job. job. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be helpful for my fellow Belizeans, and I want to say Happy New Year to all of us, mm -hmm. wishing us a healthy and awesome 2017. Mm -hmm. And so when we think of career, it's a chosen profession, right? Mm -hmm. Or an occupation. It requires special training, and it comes with some expectation of progress throughout the course of your life. Mm -hmm. And so again, that's career versus a job. A job is defined as an activity through which an individual can earn money. So it's not necessarily a career that's chosen, mm -hmm. but it's something that will put money in your pocket to put bread on the table, right? Yeah. So I thought that was, <clears throat> that was an interesting um, concept <coughs> to clear up for, for us. Yes. Um, and uh, when I put it into the Belize context, we think of, you know, you go to primary school, you go to high school, and for a lot of people who, for whom the higher education path is not necessarily an option, mm -hmm. they get a job. Mm -hmm. And that job is based on what you did in high school, mm -hmm. right? And so it may not be something that say, you know, I want to be a, whatever that may be, career is born. Or I want to be a teacher. So you think of that as a career and it's more of a long term. Yeah. But you come out, you have to work, you take what you can get to make that money. And you can take that to the junior secondary, well, the junior college, I'm sorry, level as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our students at the age 16, 17, you don't know what you want to be. So, and Lisa will, will confirm that. Um, so they go to, and it happened to a lot of us, you take general studies, mm -hmm. right? Because in your mind, you have not yet decided who you want to be or where you want to go in terms of that career. So I thought we, yeah. would, we would talk about that because that defines how people proceed on their life's journey or how they begin it in terms of the workplace, Yeah. right? You know, that's such a valid point. I think one of the things we don't pay attention to very often mm -hmm. is allowing, I, I don't, maybe it's change in high schools, I have to say that, uh, but I know that was never something that was afforded to all of us as we were going through school, mm -hmm. kind of taking aptitude tests, uh, tests that would show us where our skill sets and interests are, to guide us in making a right decision on our careers. Mm -hmm. um, and so often, uh, you have one thing in mind and you follow through, not knowing if it's where your passion is. Mm -hmm. um, and given the fact that, I mean, people graduate from high school at 16, 17, mm -hmm. it's very young to be able to make a life decision. Mm -hmm. How do you help new students when they come in and they say, okay, this is what I want to do. Maybe they're starting out right after high school. Maybe they are going to uh, go after a course in general studies. Mm -hmm. How do you help them to define that path? Yeah. What then is available? Yeah. In fact, um, I want to, to say how we do this kind of approach in terms of outreach. Yeah. Um, we used to do the tertiary level institutions, but now we realize it starts from the very beginning, like primary school. Mm -hmm. So we do outreach in primary schools, mm -hmm. just going to these students and, 
you know, starting out by asking them, what would you like to do mm -hmm. when you get it? you know, out of primary school, into high school, and further mm -hmm. into higher education. And it's amazing how these children would interact with you when you're in these, um, in these sessions and you're able to say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be, and all these different occupations yeah. come to fore. And then that's where you, you know, we would say, this is what we have to offer, mm -hmm. offer you and, and guide you in terms of because you're at this level, what you need to do in terms of your GPA, what you need to take mm -hmm. in order to go on the career path that you're planning mm -hmm. for later. And so our outreach is for, and we're also thinking, right, Miss Bennett, about preschool. Because ah. these little kids can also tell you. Um, I could remember having a four-year-old in my home telling me she wants to become a doctor, mm -hmm. used to put an egg in, a, in, a, um, in her chest of drawers and saying, I want to see what will happen days later, <laughs> you know, and it's for So it's beginning, there yeah. it starts, you know, for us to be able to, to guide them and then say, this is what yeah. we have to offer and this is how you can take, what you can take to, to get on the path that you want to go. When you have students that come in at 17, 18, and they are so fixed on a career path. Mm -hmm. But I've seen it, you know, mm -hmm. your parent has told you this is what you should be. Yes. Or you studied sciences in high mm -hmm. school and in sixth form, so then that means you're going to medicine. Um, and you know that perhaps they've not given it enough thought. Mm -hmm. How do you help them through that? Um, I've had several of those kinds of persons. Yeah. Um, people have in their, in their mind there's only doctors, lawyers, engineers. Yeah. There's so much more that persons can do. And w when, they are, when they come into the office and they're bent on just doing this, and you show them the options, mm -hmm. you say, you know what? What, what was your um, major in maybe um, in sixth form in mm -hmm. junior college? Just a general studies. Mm -hmm. No, you, you want to be, probably do, um, be a lawyer. You know, there are other options. Yeah. There's social work. Mm -hmm. There, um, you know, business, um, agribusiness. <laughs> there are other things. Yeah. You know, and then I will help them to, you know, to understand that these are what you need to do to be able to get on this, yeah. on this path. Because um, when people are focused on only just one particular career and they're not directed, yeah, it's kind of difficult for them. And if it's something that they they get into that they really do not like. Halfway through That's studying, it. they want to change and it's kind of difficult. Yeah, so and more expensive. And mm -hmm. more expensive, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And it takes longer. Time, mm -hmm. time consuming. You know. Okay. Great. So, going back to the conversation of career and job, we know the reality in Belize. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people get a job mm -hmm. and work to keep their job. Um, and they call it their career. So, we mm -hmm. appreciate your clarification. Mm -hmm. Now, some may develop the passion for what they do or mm -hmm. some may fall into if the organization is big enough fall into one area maybe hr or marketing that mm -hmm. that works better for them mm -hmm. but for somebody who's getting up every day and literally is just going to go pay their bills at the end of the month mm -hmm. what's your advice to them mm. good question marlene um in preparing for this segment today i did a little bit more looking into what again is going on in Belize. Mm -hmm. So I want to share this with you and then I'll, I'll answer your question is that it was said that although Belize is such a very small country there are lots of types of jobs in Belize right mm -hmm. and I want to start with the job thing because okay. out of jobs and I didn't say this before careers develop yeah because as you rightfully say so you got you, you get a job you get into that job and you can develop a passion for what you're doing mm -hmm. and decide this is what I want to do mm -hmm. and so teachers right mm -hmm. it, it's very well known that teachers are born some people say or teachers yeah. are made right but certainly teachers are part of our makeup mm -hmm. right and so sometimes people are forced into teaching because there are no other jobs mm -hmm. that's a common yeah. knowledge yeah however sometimes being in a classroom you know knowing you're make a dif making a difference in human beings' lives, teachers are then transformed, or people are transformed into teachers. So that's definitely one of the jobs that can lead into a career. Yeah. yeah? Accountants, again, 
Mm -hmm. People go to school, they like math, they like bookkeeping, they do accounting, and they do it because maybe they have an interest, but then you get into that and you decide, you know what, this is where I want to be, this is the thing for me. Mm -hmm. And so they start taking certification courses and so on and so forth, and then they go back into higher ed and become higher, high, uh, more qualified to mm -hmm. be a better accountant and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are others, so I'm just picking up a yeah. few. Mm -hmm. Sales reps, secretaries now call yeah. admin, uh, um, admin mm -hmm. assistants, mm -hmm. tour guides. Mm -hmm. our, country, our country's economy is driven by tourism. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I've had um, the privilege and experience of being around tour guides and some of them are excellent. Mm -hmm. They know their stuff. So I know the tourists are learning a lot about our country. Mm -hmm. So that's another career that may have started as a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And entrepreneurship, yeah. that's also taking care of that. Masons, I was surprised that that was listed, but we know a lot of people who go build homes and do that things is true. that have mm -hmm. not really um, maybe even gone to a TV. They were maybe apprenticed mm -hmm. and they like it and they, they do well at it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the jobs mentioned. And taxi drivers was one of them mm -hmm. as well. That's one of very interesting what they put down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, again, Marlene, um, put me back on point with your question so I can answer that now specifically. No, I was speaking about the fact that people are waking up. And this is a very realistic situation. Mm -hmm. Some people, mid-career, early career, are waking up every day, going to a job to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. And they know they don't like it. They know they don't want to stay there. But security is more important right. than career. How does somebody help to get themselves yeah. out of that Sometimes kind of a rut? Sometimes the market itself or the employment that they're in makes certain demands on people. Mm -hmm. Because you know, generations before, people hold a job for their entire lives. Mm -hmm. yes. right? A few years ago in the HR arena, it was determined that the people of this decade, of this generation, will have at least five to six to eight jobs before they retire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that speaks for itself. So mm -hmm. you're in a job, mm -hmm. you have to become what we call resilient. Mm -hmm. So if the company or the organization is downsizing, right sizing, whatever mm -hmm. sizing they're doing, if you want to keep your job, you have to become more qualified. So those are, that's one of the drivers for people. Yeah. Sometimes the people get bored. Mm -hmm. I've been in this job for a long time, it's yeah. boring, mm -hmm. I do the same thing every day, my kids are grown now, mm -hmm. I have to start thinking of me. So there are lots of different reasons why people would want to find a career, change a career, um, meet that need that's going on in their work environment to be mm -hmm. more qualified so that when the next promotion comes up, this is another driver. Yes. I am in a position. I there a long time and I there 15 years and they keep the promote people ahead of me. I need to do something to raise yeah. the bar. Yeah. And so these are some of the things that will motivate people. As an institution, we provide, and you mentioned it at the beginning of the segment, professional development training. And that is also driven when people realize I don't have those skills that will take me further or my boss is demanding that I have supervisory yeah. management skills. So there are lots of things that will yeah. drive mm -hmm. them and we are there to encourage them when they come to us, to Mrs. Rock in particular, mm -hmm. and they would say, um, this is what I really need. Mm -hmm. And so she looks at their profile, she looks at their qualifications, she looks at their need, and she guides them. Right. So let's talk about how we can help people. If they say 2017 is the year that I want to get on a career path, um, I have a job. Now, we don't advocate for people to jump up and quit jobs and start hunting. If mm -hmm. we, life is real and you have bills to pay and kids mm -hmm. to feed and uh, survival is important. But what can you do to help to prepare yourself? Firstly, to identify what career will be best for you. You're right. The, the field of work that is available or careers that are available has diversified. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes, we don't have them as our first thought. So how do you help, what would be your advice to people in terms of trying to figure out, if I don't want to be doing this, what do I want to do? But career change is normal, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel that like you're alone. Mm -hmm. And um, we had listed some, some tips mm -hmm. to help persons to move smoother okay. into this career change. I'll get it up, go ahead. Um, and one of the, the top things is to, to, for them to assess 
their dislikes or likes. Persons mm -hmm. want to change careers for various reasons. Sometimes mm -hmm. they, they're like Miss Benny said, they're just bored in what they're doing. Yeah. They just don't like the place where they're working mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. Um, some persons are, are visual learners, so it'd be good for them to just write down. These, this is what, these are my likes mm -hmm. from where, where I'm at right now, and these are my dislikes. Yeah. Um, as I think about changing career and I'm moving forward, I don't want to take all the dislikes with me in my new path, yeah. in my new career path. I want to definitely know that I'm happy in what I'm choosing as I move forward, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take some of the likes from this old career and as I move forward. And then we look at, um, as you think about narrowing these careers, you, do, you research your, your options, okay. what are available. I mean, in these, this day of technology, and um, we can easily go on the internet, we can go to institution, research what is mm -hmm. definitely available. So you shortlist the potential um, careers you're, think of, you're thinking about entering in. Mm -hmm. So when you do your dislikes and likes, you carry over your likes, you research your, your okay. career um, options. You also then will identify the fact that you do have transferable skills. Because mm -hmm. when, when you were in that particular career and you're moving, you're moving on, you realize that I developed some skills, yes. maybe in terms of being a good communicator, Mm -hmm. or just being a good organizer you know you could carry those skills. creativity exactly yeah and you could move forward so it's kind of identifying areas that will help you in in this new change that you want as you move forward and um definitely training and education that's yeah. important because you might need some new skills in a new area that you're looking you're looking at and that's the step a lot of people don't realize is important you know mm -hmm. it's where you go from the longing for a change to taking action for that change yes. right and sometimes the barrier of exams and experience sometimes becomes a hindrance and you're scared because you're saying man i'm so i've been in this particular career the first career so many years no i don't know if i want to do exams i don't know you know if i have the experience and so it's on it's true but then the training and one of the things that university of the western states have is what we call PLE, the Prior Learning Assessment, assessment mm. where if you um, come in with maybe somebody probably just have an associate degree, been in mm. a particular career for 15 years, but never moved forward, but did a whole lot of um, slew of um, professional development courses, other training, mm -hmm. we look at that. Mm -hmm. And you could actually um, be assessed and carry forward maybe like 21, I think, 21 credits towards maybe getting your, yeah. your bachelor's degree. And so, um, and that's for mature persons. Yeah. So there's a lot of training, professional, short courses, long um, degrees, um, that certificate programs that persons can take to enhance in an, if they want to do a career change. Mm -hmm. Please? Let me jump in, Lisa. I yes. want to say something. Uh -huh. um, Again, there's a difference between training and education, yes. and sometimes people don't understand mm -hmm. the difference, right? So I want to ask them to think of education, which is multifaceted, as more knowledge-based. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And as the universities themselves continue to evolve, you're hearing words like competency-based, mm -hmm. right? Because we've learned as well that our graduates are very good with book knowledge, but the application necessitates competences along with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now training, as Lisa explained, is so you could have already had a degree, but you don't have some basic skills that you need mm -hmm. to yeah. move forward or to change your career. Yeah. And I wanted to say when Lisa talked about the fear of exams and so on, one of the things I hear a lot, and as an adult educator, that's my background, I always give them a story where you're never too old to go back to school, because mm -hmm. that's always a big fear. I yeah. myself went back after 23 years. Mm -hmm. and when I did my master's, my classmate was 78 years old. Mm. She graduated at 80, so I want to say that publicly. Yeah. Yeah. You're never too old. Mm -hmm. The mature class that Lisa mentioned, mm -hmm. Yui has always had that, mm -hmm. always. So you come back to us, you have been in the workplace in a particular field for five years, 
that is validated, but now we've taken it a step further where some of our programs, not all of them as yet, you get the prior learning assessment and you get a course that helps you to put your portfolio together mm -hmm. so that your, your experience can be validated. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the program that you want to, to um, further your education in, you can get credits for some of those things that are relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a big help for a lot of people. And it, it's recognizing that once you've spent a substantial amount of time in one area, you have developed skills Definitely. that you would have learned expertise. in a classroom. Yes. That's uh, residency training for doctors. It's there working in a hospital. Yes. Uh, that's how yeah. they get specialized. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, you have the option of doing training and or mm -hmm. education. And I think that's key because maybe if you're too scared to jump into a degree program immediately, mm -hmm. maybe you do one, two courses and realize right. that realize that okay the brain is still mm -hmm. capable of, of of being in a classroom and that's the flexibility that yeah. the university of west indies offers um in the past it used to be where you travel to one of the islands yeah. you know to one of the main campuses but now we have the online programs yeah and you can actually look at one of our degrees and say i don't want to do this full degree but i want to do just one course within this degree just mm -hmm. to enhance in this area that i you know, want to develop in, yeah. and you have that option as well. Online is very flexible in terms of it's not a classroom. You could be working and going to school at the same time. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next um, up, we have we networking. Yeah, man, because we're thinking about again the technological era. Yeah. So you you have to develop that online um, friendship, the online communities. Yeah. Go to event mixers. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. just you you hear about new areas mm -hmm. when you from friends yeah. you know so that networking is very important when yeah. you're looking at that career change and then um, gain some experience we always hear like new persons like our new students they go to sixth form they go get their degree they get their masters they come back they kind of never had a job yeah, never had a job um, and so it's like trying to find a job but I don't have the experience and I'd say in terms of that to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Volunteering mm -hmm. also helps you develop that experience or yeah. maybe just working part time yeah. here and there to make sure it looks good yeah. on your on your C V. Mm -hmm. you know? Re request to be an intern at the place exactly. that you want to, to work. Exactly. exactly. So yeah. that's how you could gain some experience. Changing external or internal. And that's referring to there are times when you really don't have to leave the company you're working with. Your career change might happen right within your, your company. You know, maybe you were in the finance department and you want to move to maybe um, marketing, marketing yeah. or some other area. It ha can happen right there for you. So you don't really have to maybe look outside. You've been at this job for 20 years. I, I think it happened to me. I was in the library Ooh. for years and now I'm in admin, mm -hmm. you know, so it can happen. Of course, it goes back to training and education you have to develop in the area yeah if you you're gonna have that mindset um refresh how to job hunt and this is especially for persons who have been working for many many years um today you can literally send in your applications online mm -hmm. you do interviews via skype and these kinds of things so you just want to make sure you know you're you're not sending the in your um your application in a whole old style that is not relevant for yeah. today so you need to refresh yeah in that area and then uh, finally you're definitely if you're going to make this change be flexible so you may not get the dream job immediately that's right um you might have to compromise in terms of your your salary mm -hmm. you know um work hours mm -hmm. even relocation yeah you know you might have to relocate but it's just knowing you have to be flexible if you're going to go on a career path. Change. I love that you opened that portion by saying that career change is normal mm -hmm. and actually happens very often mm -hmm. for people because mm -hmm. um, you're so right, uh, Jane, when you said that, uh, and I can hear it when I, when I speak to my mother, that you, you get a job and you keep that job. That's your goal mm -hmm. um, versus uh, the different school of thought now where you go where you feel happy and you mm -hmm. feel fulfilled mm -hmm. and still able to that's meet right. your financial obligations. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to add to that something that's key. One of the reasons why people can move around more today is because they're more qualified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have gone back to school because they realize that's where it's at. Yeah. And that's why internationally, 
if a young person with a bachelor's, it used to be a bachelor's, now it's a master's, mm -hmm. and then it would be a PhD. If they're in a company for 18 months to two years, and that company is not doing anything for them, they're yeah. gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're gone. Like that. So, Marlene, I don't know how much time we have We have left. about five minutes. Five, okay. Yeah. I, I really wanted to big up yeah. our TVET areas okay. in this country. The technical and vocational, because this is an area where there's a lot of stigma mm -hmm. that should mm -hmm. not exist. Mm -hmm. And also because there's such a need for these kind of careers and jobs in our country. Yeah. So again, in researching for, for this um, segment today, I wanted to say that the tech voc is one of the areas that can really produce a lot of entrepreneurs in our country. Yeah. And we need to be aware of that. And it is entrepreneurship that drives our economy, mm -hmm. right? And so believe it or not, I want to say that these are a lot of the um, areas that are in demand today. Healthcare and social assistance, construction, mm -hmm. manufacturing, trucking, bookkeeping, accounting and auditing, food services. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a Belize where you go mm -hmm. almost every corner and somebody selling food, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the jury is out on that. P people don't cook anymore. But a lot of people are in the workplace today yeah. who were not in the workplace years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Computer support. Um, Mrs. Rock mentioned the IT. Dental care. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of young people assisting dentists as we yeah. go around the country. Hairstyling and cosmetology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ladies like to do their hair and mm -hmm. their nails and, mm -hmm. and so on. And auto servicing. Those were the ones that I, yeah. that I, mm -hmm. that I picked out. We have a lot of mechanics yeah. around here. You and know? being able, and I think this is where we go back to the training portion for mm -hmm. a very quick example. Mm -hmm. We can always remember when uh, there was an industry, uh, a factory being built and they had to outsource uh, welders because of a lack of a oh. certification. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that a skill set wasn't necessary, mm -hmm. but you needed to say you were certified in being able to do something. Mm -hmm. And one of the IT vets stepped up to be able to do it. So welders went in, mm -hmm. did the course, which they already knew the work, mm -hmm. and had the certification to be able to access those jobs. And that's an example we all use. Yeah. Yeah. But I think going beyond that example is, what is it as a country that we need yeah. in terms of our skills mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then the rest will fit together. Right. So I think one day when we get that right, yeah. then we can start building some of these other careers that yeah. we are talking about. And build them into the school system as well. That's so right. somebody That's who right. feels forced that second form to make a decision mm -hmm. that may influence their yeah. job path. Yeah. Um, and I want to pick back on more, one more thing that more Lisa options. said, because I always say I'm the womb to the tomb kind of person. Mm -hmm. Children in pre-K, daycare, they're not too young to start learning things. They see mm -hmm. a lot of stuff on social media, on TV. Mm -hmm. And if you, you see a child, like the example Lisa gave, or you see a child building things as parents, so in the home as well, and in the classroom, let's mm -hmm. start building on those things. Because sometimes the child has that. My oldest son wanted to be a chemist. Mm -hmm. And up until college, that's what he wanted to do. But he's not as committed as he wanted to be. When he heard eight years, he kind of panicked. Mom, I don't know if I can do eight years of, of, of studying, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he went into HR, which is more along the lines of his uh, personality. Mm -hmm. So you see, career change, yes, as Lisa yeah. had said. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he made that conscious decision. So I think I'll take some responsibility. Yeah. Maybe if I had gotten him some chemicals and some other things <laughs> and, and nurtured that, maybe yeah. he would have ended up being a well-known pharmacist. Or know? maybe he would have learned from early on he didn't like it. Yeah. But, it but interesting enough, he was one of the, I have three sons. Yeah. He's the one that likes to read. Yeah. So he could have read for eight years and yeah. he would have been great. But anyway, that was his destiny. It's a level of self-awareness. Yeah. But what, mm -hmm. I, what I love about our conversation this morning, especially the breakdown for career change, is that it's possible. It mm -hmm. means you have to do a bit of analysis for yourself and That's what right. you like. Mm -hmm. um, and what we didn't get into, but we, I know we'll have you guys back again, is that you have a long list of professional oh. development courses mm -hmm. to just get started. If yes. it's 
moving up and trying to get a promotion, take a management course. You yes. know, if mm -hmm. you want to shift gears and move into something else, mm -hmm. take maybe you want to move into law and you can take one of the A-level law courses. See mm -hmm. if it's a right fit and go from there. And some of our professional development courses are now online. Oh, great. They're online. So it's at your convenience. Some, yes, or, and we have some face-to-face, uh, -face, in fact, a lot. Mm -hmm. face to face yes, mm -hmm. all right well ladies thank you so much for stopping in and helping us uh we know how many people have have, have uh, said this question to themselves over the course of their careers or the jobs that they have in place uh, whether or not they want to be where they are mm -hmm. and uh, we definitely pose some food for thought for them today mm -hmm. but let's invite them what we didn't cover today you can yeah. call our office on 223-0484 yeah. you can mm -hmm. come visit us we're right on Princess Margaret Drive, you can go online website. And, and look at the website and oh. go to the Belize page and you'll see what we have to offer. Awesome. That's right. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take that final break and when we come back, we'll have our wrap up. So stay tuned.